Because that was the only thing Abraham had. It's a leap of faith. I just want to go at his bidding. His thoughts are more than my thoughts, so I can't reason it out. There is no way I will be able to explain everything. There's no way. If you're able to explain everything, then it's not faith. It's not faith. Faith will require that you have your eyes shut and say, God, did you ask me to jump? I don't know how deep the gap, the gap, the gap is. But I know that your hand will be there, stretch out to take me and prevent me from falling. I know you will lead me through the path. In Mark chapter 10, verse number 15, when Jesus was explaining what faith really means, he said it's like the way a child, a little child, Trust. Say, if, if any of you will not receive the kingdom of God, the word of God, the promises of God, the way a little child will, you won't experience the kingdom. You won't experience the power of the kingdom. It's not just talking about entering into heaven and making it by, to the, uh, through the rapture alone. You can't even experience the kingdom. You can't experience the supernatural. You can't experience God. Do you know how a child trusts? All he needs is my father has said so, my mother has said so. He doesn't know how it's going to happen. The man that come by a spoke of a bicycle. If the guy comes and says, Daddy, I want Bentley. The man come by the spoke of a bicycle. All the child wants is, I'll buy it for you. That single, I'll buy it for you, as far as the child is concerned, is done. Here is a man that can't buy a spoke of bicycle. And every father, I've never seen a parent, no matter how poor, that will give those kind of promises to a child when they are still of that impressionable age. As far as the daddy has said so, he's done. Jesus said in Mark, in, in Mark 10 verse 15, say, I say to you, whosoever does not receive the kingdom of God, Receiving the kingdom of God, receiving God's word, receiving God's promises, relating with God as a little child will. He said, by no means that person cannot enter. Not only enter it through the rapture, you can't experience the kingdom. You can't experience God because it will require that you just trust him. So they that come to God must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's faith. Everyone that comes to God, that wants to experience God, must believe that God is, that is God is God. God is God in his power, God is God in his knowledge, God is God in his ability, God is God in his promises, and that he is a rewarder. Because there are two things. You can believe that God is powerful, and you don't trust that he, that power will be exercised in your favor. Everyone that comes to God must believe that God is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Just like that man said, I know, I believe, but help my own belief. What the man is saying, I know you are God. Indeed, nothing is impossible to you, but in my situation, there's something you can do. Otherwise, it will be a complete contradiction. I believe, but help my own belief. I know you are God. But deep down within me, my faith level is zero. Is there something you can do? Jesus said, how come you are asking me if there is anything I can do? Is there anything I cannot do? Say, I know, but I don't know. I believe, but I still don't believe. Just help me. Help my own belief. Help my own belief. Help my own belief. I know you are God, but help me to also know that you are a rewarder. I know you heal. Let me also get to that point where I would say he has healed me or he can heal me or he will heal me. I've had several testimonies. I've moved away from the realm of those who doubt that those testimonies are real. I know it's real. My problem is just that I don't know why I haven't been a beneficiary of this kind of testimony. Everyone that comes to God, that must experience God, must believe that God is God. God is great. God is good. God is powerful. God is all-knowing. God is all-capable. And that he is a rewarder. 
He is good and he's also good to me. He's powerful and he's also powerful in my situation. He's a promise keeper and he keeps the promises he has made to me. He helps several people and he will help me. Everyone that must experience God. Because that's what makes you take that leap of faith. If you are confident that it is God's power that is behind you, you will make that step. If you know it's God that is leading you, you will, you will take that step. It's a leap of faith. God, I'm trusting in your ability. I'm trusting in your promises. That is the only way to experience him. Scripture says without faith, it is impossible to please him. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to experience God. Without faith, it is impossible to experience the supernatural. Every of the word that you have heard, sometimes on Sunday, as the word is coming up, something is tearing up in your spirit. It's me God is talking to. God is asking me to do that thing. God is asking me to take that step. God is asking me to move in this direction. As soon as you heard it, then the next thing is, how is it going to happen? Will it be possible? Will it be visible? Say, no, don't, don't try to reason it out. Don't try to reason it out. You must take that step it's asking you to take because it, that's exactly what makes the supernatural to be experienced. If it's all logical, it won't, it, it won't be the testimony that you are waiting for. Everybody will be able to see it. Everybody will understand it. It will make sense to everybody. Without faith, you can't please him. Without faith, you can't experience him. What has God told you in the course of this series? It will take an action from you. An action that is fueled by faith. An action that is inspired by faith. An action that is not waiting for the whole journey to be explained to you. An action that is not waiting for you to, for God to come and show you before you take the first step how the destination will be. Do you know why sometimes God keeps that away from you? If you know how rough the journey will be sometimes, you won't take that first step. Because the fact that God has asked you to go on a journey doesn't mean you will go through some rough riding. It will come. If God shows you everything at the beginning, God, call, call Abraham, this place you are going, at some point along the line, you need to, the son will come, but you eventually have to kill him. So why, why, are we, why are we going on the journey in the first place? This is what I've waited for for the whole of my life. And then when he comes, I will still have to kill him. So let me just, I, I don't want to experience joy for a moment and then it's ending in a catastrophic manner. If God tells you how the journey was going to be like, Sometimes you won't take that step. And part of the experience is the learning on the way. Because it, 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 it of a necessity must happen. That's why sometimes God keeps it away. Just take every first step. Takes you closer. You won't see the entire staircase, but you are seeing the next step to take. Then you are seeing the next step to take. Then you are seeing the next step to take. Ask anyone that God has helped to start a business, start a career, Travel, do whatever. Once they get to the first time and they realize what is happening, they all, it's like the, the children of Israel. They want to go back to Egypt. When we were there, we would eat uh, cucumber. We would eat uh, some nice, no, can we go back? You want to go back? I remember a story, maybe, I think maybe it was early January or late, late last year, of a lady who wanted to travel abroad by every means possible. There was nothing this lady didn't do to get out of the country. He wanted to go and study it. He wanted to. I was working for one nice organization in Nigeria. But for seven years, she's been stagnated. No promotion, no. And she's just gotten tired of everything. She got so tired that even in spite of how much I could convince people to stay on a job before and make sure you've got something before you get another one, at some point, this lady left. We've been on it for, for months. And then she would tell me, I will leave, I won't leave. And now I know, just keep searching, you will do something. The next thing I saw was she just sent me a, res a resignation letter. Not that she was sending, she just already resigned. That was how tiring the situation became. And then as God will have it, I think it was a leap of faith for her. As God will have it, one thing happened after the other, the admission happened. 
she went abroad. I'm not sure it was up to two months. If you listen to the conversation between me and this lady, she wanted to be back in Nigeria. She was so, everything was so frustrating that she was like, no, if I knew this was what I was going through, I said, relax. Relax. Sometimes I send back, you know, the video recording. There was a particular video recording she sent to me the day she got her visa. She was crying. I still have that video with me. Every time that she expresses frustration like she's coming back, I will just send it. And people that know me know I do that very well. I just send that video back to her. They say, this was you three months ago with tears of joy. Like what you've waited, up, what you've waited for forever. What you waited for has come to pass. But now you are there regretting that you ever made that move. They just relax. It, 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 why? The stress of the job, she's trying to pay her school, she's trying to pay for accommodation, it becomes and a single lady for that matter. Everything was so stressful, she looked like the weight of the whole world was on her shoulder. If she was back in Nigeria, things would be better. At least she would never go a day without eating, no matter how poor she is. But here on the street of London, nobody's going to give you one penny, one, 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 one shishi. We know they see. You, you, walk your, you walk your ass out. Say, don't worry. It's, it's, if God shows you the whole thing, you won't make that. Cross it over. As I speak now, the lady is done with her program. She's done with her program. If God shows you the entire journey, you won't, want to, you won't want to go. You want to take the first step. Because it will still be rough. It will still be rough. And I lie not. There are moments that this lady will tell me... That, the, the moment I am, there is no sin I cannot commit. That's how bad. Just to be able to sustain myself, say, no, you, you just hold it. You won't, you, you won't die. You won't die. You will get it somehow, somehow. And God always comes through. There was a day she sent to me, the accommodation they were going to, they are going to cancel, invalidate my visa. So they won't invalidate it. Don't worry. Somehow, somehow, it will come through. And then, from money, she resumed in the money for her work. Before you know, by six o'clock, she's back. By seven, she's gone to another one. Say, so you won't die. At least every effort gives you extra money. So you are laboring, but you are seeing fruit of your labor. Isn't that better? Somehow, God will raise help. God will bring how it goes. After nine months, your school bill is over. The same discipline you have maintained now, if you maintain it for another one year, you're going to buy a car. The same discipline. Because you don't, you don't have 15,000 pounds school bills to pay anymore. And you don't have 1,200 pounds accommodation to pay every month. And you paid it in one year. The Bible says, For thus saith the Lord, 2 Kings 3, verse 17, You will not see wind, you will not see rain, yet the valley will be filled with water. It won't look like it. Say so there will be no rain, there will be no wind, but the supply will come. The water will come. It will be rough, but yet you will go through. You will see neither rain nor wind. You may not see these examples you are looking for. You may not immediately be able to put all of the resources together, but somehow you won't die on the journey. Somehow you won't die on the journey. Sometimes I will take you through. Faith is taking that action based on the promise, based on the instruction. Don't let fear grip you as we try to rationalize. Fear grips our hearts. What if this happened? When this happened? How will I resolve it? What step will I take? How will I overcome? How will I handle this one? Fear grips your heart. That's why you don't try to rationalize it. Who will come to my rescue? Who will I call on? Fear will grip your heart. Every breakthrough is a response to instruction. Fuel by faith. Every breakthrough. Just, it's, it's just instruction. Hear every, anyone out. 
is a response to instruction, obedience to instruction, obedience to God's word, especially God's word, God's promise. He has promised he won't fail. He will give you instruction that will be strange. Just obey. Some lepers came to him in Luke 17, 10 of them actually, and instead of laying hands on them and heal them and all that, go and show yourself to the priest. We came to be healed. We came for solution. You already know that if they see us in the city, we may even be killed. Because it is forbidden that as people who are leprous, we are seen in the midst of the people. We've come to you. And instead of healing them, just go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says as they were on their way going, they got healed. It's, it's obedience to the instruction. He's the one, he knows that when they get to the city, if they get to the people still leprous, they're going to be killed. They're going to be stoned. They are not supposed to. And he said, go and show yourself to the priest. And the Bible says as they were going, just that simple obedience to the instruction, as they were going, they got healed. They got healed just because they obeyed him. What instruction has God given you that fear, you know, fear and lack of faith is holding you back from taking that instruction? No matter how ridiculous is it. Jesus was at the wedding of um, Canaan. The wine got finished. The mom knows that he was going to ask them to do something ridiculous. If he didn't give them that pre-warning, they would they probably just ignore his word. Master, the wine has finished. So are there pots around? We're talking wine. We're not talking water. They've eaten, they've drank water. It's wine we're looking for. The mother of Jesus said, whatsoever he asks you to do, just do it. Just do it. Don't try to rationalize it. Don't try to think it through. Don't try to see whether it meets your logical sense. Whatsoever he asks you to do, just do it. What happened? They eventually poured the water. He said, go and taste it. Go and bring me a cup of it. And when they tasted it, he said, the master of the ceremony, the people there said, the way we knew it, it is this kind of, what, this kind of wine is reserved for a different time. How come you have reserved the very best just by simple obedience to instruction? Whatsoever I ask you to do, just do it. What, what has God laid in your heart? There's something God needs you to do to change your level. There's something God needs you to start. There's a place God needs you to go to. There's, there must be something. And your instruction is not my instruction. You know exactly what God is asking you to do. You know exactly what God is laying in your heart to do. And what he's asking you this morning is, you will take a step of faith. You will move and see God prove that he is the one that's given that instruction. And as you take the first step, you'll see how the, the road gets clearer. you see how the instructions become more reasonable to you. You can't reason it out at the beginning. You will get to the final end, you'll be like, if I refuse to obey God or to listen to his instruction, I would never have landed in this particular place. He didn't make sense when he was asking me to, but I just trusted him. I just trusted him and see how what I have waited for, God has eventually brought to pass. Let's rise up upon our feet. And I'm going to ask God and say, Lord, help my own belief this morning. Help my own belief. Help me to be able to obey your word, your instruction. Whatsoever it is that he has commanded you to do, why not talk to him and say, Lord, this morning I will obey you. I will obey your instruction. I will stop rationalizing. I will stop rationalizing. I will stop applying human logic, human sense to what you are telling me. Faithful is he who has promised, who also will do it. Hebrew 10 verse number 23. Faithful is he who has promised. I know you are a faithful God. I hope you are praying. I hope you are praying. Lord, I know you are a faithful God. You will never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. 
I put my faith in Jesus. You are the anchor for my soul. You will never, ever let me down. He said, let us hold fast without wavering the hope that we affirm because God can be trusted to keep his promise. Hebrews 10 verse 23. I know you are trustworthy. Lord, I know you are trustworthy. I know you are trustworthy. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Help my unbelief this morning. Help me to take that next step again. Maybe I've tried before in my own way and it didn't work, therefore I, I got tired. Help me to move again at your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. There was a story in Luke chapter 5 of Peter. The Bible said they have toyed all night, meaning that they have tried it at different times, but it didn't work. One of the reasons why sometimes our faith level can be very low is because we have made some failed attempts. But unfortunately, the devil will not make us understand that that step you took was not in obedience to God's instruction. He just wants you to know that you have tried before and that you have failed. He won't let you know that it wasn't God that asked you to do that which you have done. Jesus came to the scene, Luke chapter 5 from verse number 1. Say, I need you to launch back into the deep. Peter said, we have toyed all night, we have caught nothing. But at your word, just because you are the one saying it, I will try one more time. And the Bible says he launched into the deep and the, the, the fish they caught was making their net to sink, to break. I want you to pray and say, Lord, I'm taking that step at your instruction. That step as I take, Lord, let there be visible evidence that obedience to your word, obedience to your instruction pays. Stir up faith in me again to take that action, to step out again, to launch into the deep again, to take an action again. Help my unbelief, Father. I'm launching one more time at your instruction. I'm launching one more time at your instruction. I'm launching one more time at your instruction. I'm launching into the deep at your instruction. This is the time that my faith is going to be back with action. I will not only profess faith in you, I will take an action that matches my profession. He said, let us hold fast, not wavering, the profession of our faith, because faithful is he who has promised, who also will do it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want to pray for some people this morning. You know that there is an instruction that God has given you. You know it clearly in your heart. That there is something God is asking you to do. To change your story. To change your situation. But fear is gripping. You think you are inadequate. You think the resources is not there. You think the instruction it doesn't make sense. You think that if you take that step, it doesn't make sense to you that the result will be what you desire. And fear is gripping your heart and you can't take that step. This morning, like Peter, we want to tell Jesus that at his word, we are launching one more time. Will you raise your hand again and we are crying unto him for help? That this time around, Lord, we are launching into the deep at your instruction. We are not holding back. We are not allowing fear to grip our heart no more. We are not allowing logic to hold us back from taking that step again. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word is true. Your word is sure. Whatsoever it is that you have said out of your mouth, the Bible says they don't return back to you void. They accomplish the purpose for which you send them. And I know that for every one of your children, there is a next level instruction. There is a next level instruction that you are asking us to take. This morning, I decree that the hold of fear that is holding your people back from taking that instruction is broken over them in the name of Jesus. This 
morning I decree a step change in your faith level. A step change in your faith level. In the name of Jesus. That you are taking that step. Whatsoever it is that is holding you back, the grip over you is lost. Whether it's fear, the grip over you is lost. Whether it's the enemy making the situation so, so precarious that you are so fearful of the next step, I break the hold of the spirit of fear over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree a step forward. I decree that you move forward in the name of Jesus. As you take every step, the Lord Jesus that knows how to help helplessness or helpless situation, that knows how to restore faith when faith level is low, we come and do a sudden work in your situation that will ignite hope and faith in you in the name of Jesus. Between now and the next 48 hours, I decree, there is something God will do in your life to convince you that he's the one asking you to take that instruction in the name of Jesus. God will do a quick work of faith. A quick work that will rekindle faith in the name of Jesus. That your story will never remain the same. God is sending someone, God is sending something that will validate his instruction for your life. That you will be absolutely clear that it's God that is asking you to take that step in the name of Jesus. And as you take that step, you see the way gets better. The road gets clearer. The blessings and the promises get surer in the name of Jesus. God will prove that he's God in your life. And he will prove that he's a rewarder of them that trust him. In the name of Jesus. As you cross over into the new month of August, you will take delivery of God's promises. You will take delivery of God's blessings. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke stagnation over your life. I rebuke the spirit of stagnation. You will move forward. Your story will advance. In the name of Jesus. God will give you a testimony. A sudden work of testimony. In the name of Jesus. Your life will never remain the same again. In the name of Jesus. The proof that God is the one that sent this word to us in the month of July will be evident in your life in the name of Jesus. He will give you a testimony. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. I want to pray for maybe there's anyone in the auditorium or those who may be watching the live stream. You are not born again. You haven't given your life to Christ. There is no step of faith that is comparable to that step that we take when we surrender our life to Jesus. Because that is the time that you realize, that is, that is the time that you express the, the, the greatest level of faith that you are a sinner and that God has sent his son Jesus to die for your sin and that if you will confess him with your mouth, and forsake your sin, he will forgive you, wipe away your sins, and you will become his son, you will become his daughter. So if there's anyone who just wants to take that step of faith, can I ask that you please raise your hand as we pray? While all eyes are closed, all heads bowed, you just want to take that step of faith, of surrendering your life to Jesus, raise your hand as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whosoever come to you, you will in no wise reject. Whether they are here in the auditorium or watching and listening over the live stream, everyone whose hands is raised, yielding and in response to the call for salvation, I ask, Lord, that you will forgive their sins, that you will wash their sins away. You will blot out their name from the book of death and you write down their names in the book of life. In the name of Jesus. As they confess you as Lord this morning. Let the totality of their wrongdoings. The totality of their sins. And unrighteousness. Be blotted out in the name of Jesus. Adopt them as your sons and your daughter. And give them the power to live as children of God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you precious father. Father I pray for the entire church that your word over our lives in the month of July will not escape fulfillment in every life, in any life, in the name of Jesus. We know your word is true. 
We know your word is faithful. We pray that there will be no exception in All Star Church to the faithfulness of your promises in the name of Jesus. Change our situation. Change our story. And demonstrate that you are a good God through our lives and through our stories in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please take your seats. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's make it louder. Let's make it louder for him. Amen. Obedience to the instruction. Very clear and concise this morning. And uh, the popular um, scripture in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 has instruction for us. He'll bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that they may meet in my house and prove me herewith, says the Lord. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that they shall there shall not be room enough to receive it. That's an instruction there. And it's time for us to play our part and be obedient to that. So please rise up on your feet and let's uh, give our offering um, joyfully. <laughs> joyfully. So the media team will display the church accounts now. You can transfer and you also give, you can also give the offering here in the basket. So the choir. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Joyous celebration. Joyous celebration. Joy To my left is by my side. I look to my right. By my side. When I look to my left, by my side. I look to my right. By my side. When I look to my left, by my side. I look to my right. When I look to my left, I look to my right. Oh, hallelujah! I have a very big God. So, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you once again for this privilege to obey your instruction, to be obedient to your call. Thank you for the blessing which we have received in the month of July. Thank you for the next level. Thank you for the prophecy. Thank you for the inspiration. Thank you for coming to uplift our hearts with the powerful messages and the songs and even the community we have here. May name be highly exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, this is just a little of what you know, you have done for us in this month. I pray you receive it and use it for your propagation of your gospel in Jesus' name. Lord, rebuke the devour for our sake and take us to that new height every day in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed.
Hallelujah. Don't mind me, I'm taking leap of faith. <laughs> Praise God. But I also need to on the mic, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. God himself will take us to that destination in Jesus' name. So quickly, want to recognize special people in our midst this Sunday morning. If this is your first time worshiping with us on a Sunday, please joyfully, let's see your hands up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet as we welcome you in our own special way. Oh, yeah. We welcome you to a father's house. Welcome you to a father's house. Welcome you with love and joy. Welcome you with love and joy. City set up on the hill. This is your moment to rise and shine. This is your moment to rise and shine. With glory, goodness, and greatness. Glory, goodness, and greatness. Showcase for all of the world to see. Showcase for all of the world to see. We welcome you to All Star Church. We welcome you to All You are a star. Shine. You shine so bright. May I ask the church to stretch forth their hands towards them and just pray over them, decree God blessings over them. God that has caused them to be in his presence today will bless them in the name of Jesus. Those ideas that God has given them, those assignments God has committed to them, let's begin to pray that God will help them. God will increase their faith. God will give them instructions and help them to take you know, those steps of faith to actualize those dreams, those assignments that God has trusted to them. In the name of Jesus, we decree God's blessings over your life. In the name of Jesus, God himself will make it happen. God himself will make it happen. God himself will rule away every challenge on your path. He will send help to you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. God bless you. Can we appreciate them once more? Indeed, it's a great honor. It's a great honor to have you in our midst. So we ask that um, you wait briefly after the service as we welcome you in know, special. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. All right. So um, a lot has happened this month, isn't it? A whole lot. A whole lot. Can we just celebrate Jesus? We can't thank him enough. Hallelujah. Our month of new heights. Glory to Jesus. And brethren, you know, one thing God do, you know, he doesn't just take us high. Amen. He help us to sustain those heights. And even take us, what, higher and higher. So this new month, we are entering into our month of marvelous help. Amen. Marvelous help. Praise God. I believe our pastor will still um, share more light on that, you know. But please, I want to enjoin us to make this new month, this coming month, you know, a month with the Lord. And the Lord himself will send help wherever we needed help in Jesus' name. All right, so our services continues. We meet every um, Sunday by 9 a.m. for our Sunday service. And every um, Wednesday we meet for our midweek service. And the time is what? Is 6 p.m. Okay? Explore the word as we attend. May God bless us in Jesus' name. Also, every last Friday of the month, we also gather here for our monthly vigil. Amen. How was last Friday? How many of us were around? <laughs> Praise God. 
So what happened to those that were not that was not around? Praise God. Now is the time to seek God, okay? So let's endeavor to be in our next congregational video. And as we do that, God Himself will bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What an awesome service this has been. And we really want to bless God for the month of July. How many of you know that you have been moved from the level you were at the beginning of July? You are, you know, it's a new height. It's a new level. It's a new level. Hallelujah. We bless God for, you know, his words and the efficacy and the power of his word to transform, to transform our lives. Uh, the number of people that, you know, I can't see in church today, please be your brother and sister's keeper and make sure you reach out to someone that you didn't see in church uh, today and make sure that they get hold of um, today's message so they can also be a blessing. Uh, like uh, Brother Daniel mentioned, the month of August is going to be a very, very special month. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you are excited like I am. Second Chronicle chapter 26 verse number 15b. Second Chronicle 26 verse 15b says, His fame spread across everywhere because God gave him a marvelous help. Hallelujah. The month of August is your month of marvelous help. Somebody say amen. It's my month of marvelous help. God is going to help someone marvelously. You know, when he asks you to take some step, he asks you to do some things. He himself knows the weakness of man. He said, this one, I will help you. If it takes God dragging you, God will drag you. If it takes him pushing you, he will push you. If it, if it takes him to beat you, he will beat you. Hallelujah. But that help, you will get. Somebody says, my month of marvelous help. So please, I want to encourage you to please make sure you don't miss service. Uh, throughout Sundays, I will make sure that... Um, I don't miss it also. Hallelujah. Physically or virtually. Hallelujah. And talking the month of August is going to be a very, very, very special month. And I want us to, um, you know, we're going to um, pray specially, you know, for someone who is actually taking a leap of faith. I think it's, I think it's a leap of faith. Um, we haven't had spotlight in a while. And so maybe we'll have a, a, a little bit of spotlight on 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 this one and this one is going to make me cringe now so because um all right so before we, we before we pray for you know we pray, we pray for her timmy um it, it, today is the last sunday service that timmy will be with us uh before he moved to school all right um so it's is the last sunday is the last month is the last service he's been counting down it's been counting down for some days now. It's my last VG. It's my last midweek service. It's my last Sunday service. It's my last choir rehearsals. It's my last, it's my last. All right. It, it thinks we are the one that will miss her. We are going to miss all of us. But just we can set her in the mood. Can we, do you have that video? So please do that short video to just remind her what she was. So that when she starts, you know, Bugain, like she's a big girl, she will know. Media, please, you must come, come forward, so that if you want to, if you want to, if you want to tear up, you can tear up. Everybody can see you. Star Church, shining the lights. This week on All Star Spotlight, we will be celebrating Oluwa Timelain Olubenro, or Timmy, as we like to call her was born on Wednesday night, March 2005. Can we have yet to the minimum? Let's clap for her. And then, please, do you ask, please, please, let us give me one minute. I'll be back. One minute. Okay, as she will be going to do what she wants to do, her fashion dressing, we are going to see if she's the finest lady. We are going to see if she's finer than me or not. Despite the short time she has spent on Earth, She's managed to achieve, accomplish, and attain numerous wonders. Timmy is a dreamer. She aspires to become a neurosurgeon in the nearest future, like her mentor, 
Dr. Ben Carson. She's an author with two books to her name, The Dream, The Future in the Eyes of a Teenager, which she wrote at the tender age of 12 and published at age 13. Somebody say the dream of a glorious future. The Stitch that saves nine, which she wrote at 15 and published to mark her 16th birthday. So I'm someone that God has blessed with a lot of gifts, a lot of talents. Timmy is also a music minister and a member of the Masterpiece at All Star Church, where she sings alto. She's the first child to pass the Yomi and Tolu Ulubuenro, with three younger siblings under her belt, and a friend to many individuals far and near. Timmy loves to sing. Oh, Write, read, sleep, and watch movies. She's indeed an all-rounder, excelling in more ways than one. Academically, possessing several awards and laurels, and also possessing multiple intelligences in logic and math, music, interpersonal and intrapersonal, and verbal and linguistic skills. She recently won a Cambridge Award in Foreign Languages Mandarin for exceptional performance, emerging as the best student in Nigeria for the 2021 May-June examinations. Oluwa Timilane Ulubunro is many things to us here at the All-Star Church. She has touched our lives in so many ways, inspired us, and left us with numerous unforgettable experiences, especially her iconic rap. Timmy has left us with moments that we will be cherishing forever. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes that you are restless The time has come for you to leave It's so hard to let you go But in this life I know you have to be Who you were made to be As you step out on the road I'll say a prayer so that in my heart, you always will be there. This is not goodbye. I know we'll meet again. So let your life begin, cause this is not goodbye. It's just I love you to take with you until you're home. What we waited for had eventually come to pass, so she's, she's, she's leading, the, leading the charge. So um, for, for those of you that maybe read uh, the story in, in her book, in the first book, uh, The Dream, I think right from the age of nine or ten or thereabout, she's always said, she said you want to study neuroscience, um, look like a dream, then she'll be going to Washington University in St. Louis and she's going to study medicine, neuroscience. So I just wanted to rise up. Um, okay, so I wanted to come and help me. Daniel, just coordinate so that we just pray for her that she will fulfill purpose. Um, she will not get derailed. And that she started strong with God, she will end strong with God. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. We believe that the height you've attained is God that has done it, okay? And God hasn't started yet. If God can open your eyes to see the future, he's taking you. 
then you will live to thank him every moment of your life. Brethren, I want us to just stretch forth our hands towards God's daughter. First, let's thank God over her life. Yes, she's still young in age, but God has done so much for her. Lord, we are grateful for what you've done. Only you can do this. For taking her, oh Lord, from the time she was conceived, you know, you took her through her, uh, um, you know, childhood days as a toddler, as a child she goes through school. You kept her safe, oh Lord. You helped her in her academics. You helped her to grow up, to be a responsible child in the society. Lord, we've come to say thank you. Only you can do this. For making your daughter a role model in the society. For making her a reference point of what you can do. For your marvelous help over her life, Lord, we'll say thank you. 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 Can we just begin to pray that God himself will take her, even as we begin this new journey, God will be with her. He promised in his word that he will not leave us, neither will he forsake us. He said he will be with us. He will be with her in the name of Jesus. God be with your daughter. God be with your daughter. God be with your daughter. In the name of Jesus. You've been her help in ages past. Lord, we ask that you remain her help. Even this present time. And in many years to come. In the name of Jesus. Can we prove her that she will not fail. She will not falter. In the name of Jesus. God's eyes will be upon her. In the name of Jesus. Even as she's making her parents proud. And her was proud. The global world she will make proud in the name of Jesus. Lord, take her beyond her widest dream. Do, oh Lord, for her beyond her greatest imagination. For you, oh Lord, is able to do exceeding abundantly, far above all we could ever ask or imagine. Over your daughter we decree and declare that you do that, all of that that you have promised. In the name of Jesus. Timmy will be great. She'll be greater than her parents. She'll be greater than her teachers. Lord, through your daughter, you begin new changes that will, revolution, that will change or turn you know, the, 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 the path that she had chosen. The path of neuroscience. You do something new. Great research, new findings. Things that will cause changes you know, and transformation to humankind through your daughter. In the name of Jesus. Father, be with her through the journey. Every time we hear news from her, let it be good news. In the name of Jesus. We will not lose this one young. In the name of Jesus. Every news we hear from her will always gladden our hearts. And Lord, we also pray for everyone here who is trusting God for new heights, for increase. Lord, we are decreeing, oh Lord, you are the one who helped the helpless. You said you are the father to the fatherless. You know, you are the strength to the weak. And Lord, you are the one who can take us to the future that only you desire. We pray for them, oh Lord, that you will take them there. You will send help in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Bless you. So, so she has a lot to say, I believe. But please don't cry. Eh? We are, we'll be missing her actually. Eh? For the fact I'm not crying doesn't mean I'm not crying you know, inside me, okay? All is well there. Yeah? Mm? So just say a few words to us and <laughs> uh, um, please please have your seat everybody um, maybe I should make this like testimony when people come oh I have a song to sing I have a song to sing <laughs> so <clears throat> see what the Lord has done <clears throat> Can see what the Lord has done what we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has 
I have like uh, a vision this moment like a gazillion times. And then I was like, uh, I mean, how guy, I won't cry, but then I ended up crying. But it is well. <clears throat> um, I just, I just, I just want to thank God. It is not by my power. It's not by my might. It's not by my strength. It's not by my hard work. It's not by the church. It's not by prayer. It's just the grace of God, from the application process to the writing of the exams to every. I just want to thank God for my admission i thank god for the school i thank god for everything and i also thank god for all-star church I thank god for my family you know <clears throat> you know this the foundation that i have that i have gotten here this strong foundation i'm incredibly grateful for it and you know i'm, I'm really excited for the new journey ahead um very excited very hopeful you know, ready to, to shine, ready to, to be that star girl, you know. So yeah, I just, I just want to thank God. I, I'm so grateful, so happy. Um, and I just also want to use this opportunity to, to encourage any person here who is also looking for or that opportunity to maybe study abroad or to do their masters or their undergraduates in um, education. I just want to say that, you know, it, it was God that helped me. It's 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 possible. It's 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 not it's not that extraordinary. Like with with God on your side, you can do this. So I want you to use me as like a point of contact. Like you know, if God could do it for Timmy, God could do it for you too. And you know. One day you two you come up here and sing, see you as a lot. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm, I'm incredibly grateful. I just want to say thank you to All Star Church. Thank you to the Masterpiece. Thank you to my parents. Um, yeah, so it's not a goodbye. Okay, see you later. Bye. <clears throat> Funny thing, actually, I have one of the people who have really, 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 really impacted me here today. I have one of my teachers here, one of my teachers here. His name is Mr. Enekai. <laughs> Mr. Enekai. <laughs> he, was, he was my form tutor from year seven up until year 10 so uh, I just wanted to say thank you sir for everything uh, he's also here to you know celebrate with me so you guys should please say big God bless you to Mr. Nekai <laughs> thank you hallelujah God bless you um, has it been a good service <laughs> I didn't know I can be I can move to a point where I have to drop the mic I can I thought I can talk you know so but we're grateful to God. We really, really appreciate God um, for what God has done. One of the things um, I want to encourage, particularly as many of us who, you know, who also, you know, have this desire and, and, and hunger in our heart that God will help us raise children. You know, one of the things that happens is that our children practically take off or, or, or leverage off or inherit or enjoy the blessings of the seed, you know, that we as parents sow. And sometimes we sow it well in advance. Uh, Proverbs 20 verse number 7 says, children are fortunate when they have God-fearing parents. So you can, you can get to a point where the children are already raised and you are doing night vigils, you know, and all of that. And sometimes you really don't see that evidence. Sometimes I, I question God quite a lot. You know, I'll be like, so why did this all happen? Why is all of this happening? Why is this all of this happening? And one of the things that God opened my eyes to see is that if you serve God in your youth, you serve God in your youth, one of the fruits, one of the, one of the payback for you is that God gives you seeds, you know, that you will have peace over. 
all right? Uh, many of the things happening to our children, they are beyond explanation. I'm a very coded person, and I don't talk quite a lot. Um, but if you know half of what is happening to all of our children, um, you will know that it's, it's not coincidence. It's not, it's not because the parents are so good, they know how to raise their children, or they are so smart, so they raise uh, smart children. It's, it's just God doing his thing, you know, through them. And it's a fruit, you know, of generation after generation. God, you know, and, and, um, make them to enjoy the blessings and the benefit of your own investment, of, of your own service, and of commitment and devotion to God. So serve God in your youth. Serve God even before those children come. And let God by himself already propose that the seed that will come through you will even be greater in commitment and in service and in excellence and in all of the things that, you know, that's going to happen. Hallelujah. And God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Let's rise up upon our feet and just prophesy into our week. Even as we step into a new week, decree and declare that this will be a, a week of favor. It's a week of marvelous help that you will enjoy help from God. You will enjoy help from God. You will enjoy help from God as you step out every day. You will receive divine assistance. You will receive divine help in every way. You will not be without God's help throughout the course of this week. It will help you in the morning. It will help you in the evening. It will send helpers to you. It will help send helpers of destiny to you. That God will favor you. God will bless you. God will make his world to become real in your life in the name of Jesus. Decree that it will be a week of absolute peace and security. There will be no disaster. There will be no evil. There will be no danger. This month of August, your testimony will be that God helped you marvelously. Whether you are traveling, whether you are home, local travels, intra-city travel, the Lord will preserve your outgoings. It will preserve your incomings. It will keep you when you are at home. It will keep you when you are at work. In the name of Jesus. No evil will be heard concerning you. No evil will be heard concerning your family. The next time I'm seeing you physically, one-on-one, -on -one, it will be good news. In the name of Jesus. There will be no tragedy concerning anyone. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. Father, I decree and declare over your children that even as we step into the new month of August, that each and every one of your children will receive divine help. In the name of Jesus. Every day you will send help to them. You will send helpers of destiny to them in the name of Jesus. You will preserve them. You will protect them. Their outgoings and their incomings are preserved in the name of Jesus. No tragic news, no tragedy, no disaster will be heard concerning any one of them. But it will be good news at home. It will be good news abroad in the name of Jesus. I specially commit them into your hands, Lord. That by the next time I'm seeing each and every one of them physically, their life and their story will have transformed remarkably in the name of Jesus. That I will hear good news concerning them. And by the time I'm seeing them one on one, it will be testimonies of what God has done in their lives, in their families, in their careers, in their business, in the name of Jesus. They will not fall, they will not fail. They will not run away from your presence, but you will keep them in your presence forever and they will serve you with the whole of their strength in the name of jesus thank you precious father in jesus mighty name we have decree amen hallelujah can we share isaiah 16 verse 1 as our benediction even as we go isaiah 16 verse 1 media is on the screen once you go arise shine for your light has come and the glory of the lord is risen let me make that declaration to someone. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen. Be a prophet to yourself now. Make a declaration over your head. I will arise and I will shine, for my light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful week and a wonderful month. Hallelujah. Ministers, please know that we'll meet very briefly. All right, workers, ministers, everyone, just briefly wait for a brief.